In this video, I want to discuss the basics of photojournalism, which is a little different. So, uh, you know, we're not talking anymore about uh, really pushing the content through the written word, but through the medium of uh, photography and, and still photographs. So um, let's jump in here and discuss just what is photojournalism? What's well, the use of photos or of images to tell a story? the photos or images to tell a story. Um, so again, we're focusing on telling a story. We're just doing so through a little different medium. So some famous examples from over the years include you know, telling the plights of, of migrant workers, migrant farm workers, people caught in that in the 30s. This famous photograph from VGA Day at the end of World War II. Uh, you know, people crossing the river, immigrating into America. Uh, this haunting picture of a young girl in Afghanistan in the 80s uh, that really captured uh, the world uh, when it appeared on the cover of National Geographic. Of course, these famous images, many famous images, 9-11 and the destruction and the, the despair that, that uh, took place that day, as well as the, the hope that came afterwards and the unity that came from you know, this the symbolic image of the firefighters raising the, the flag there at Ground Zero almost immediately after it happened, really, when things had calmed down. Uh, the tragic tale of, of people trying to escape uh, horrible horrible uh, wars and other things by you know, this family passing their child through a barbed wire fence to get uh, to a little better life hopefully they hope anyway this image may not seem as as famous or familiar to you until you cr kind of crop it down and realize that it was the basis for this uh, famous poster that was created and this image that was created during the 2000 uh, 2008 election um, you know, the, based on that image barack obama sitting with george clooney but that became very famous as the hope image there and of course, you know, hard to recognize this image of, of George Floyd in that incident, but also, you know, which tragic, tragic day and, and really uh, symbolic of some of the, the pain and, and issues going on in our country. But also then this this you know, image captured by a photojournalist uh, up, you know, in the aftermath, even though there was some conflict, there was some people just try there, there's still hope here there's still um some sense uh, some sense of unity as, as a nation hopefully that we can get to so you know again photojournalism bringing us all these messages despair hope emotion just taking us through the entire journey uh, of being human really a really powerful medium of photography so but telling a story then within that is is the, the idea of photojournalism more than just pictures it's telling that story so how do we structure photojournalism articles? Well, there are a series of different kinds of shots that are used and put together to, to tell these stories. So we start with kind of a cover shot, right, which is a lot of times combined with a headline, but, but really is the image that brings us in, it really kind of captures the moment and brings us in, makes us want to see the rest of this. It captures our imagination, really sets the scene for all that. Right? Then we have what we call establishing shots. Typically, there's a little; these are a little uh, wider angle, so we're seeing a bigger portion of that picture and, and kind of giving us some context for where things are taking place and what's taking place and just kind of, again, setting the stage, giving us an idea, here's where we're at, here's what's important, here's the bigger picture of what's going on. You combine those within detail shots. We have these establishing shots, which are really kind of wider angle, show the whole picture, and then detail shots, which give us a great amount of detail of what's happening. You know, they really focus in on something specific within that within that moment, within that event, uh, within that you know emotion that that really gets into the details there of what's happening. In between there, you have just kind of what you call filler shots, which kind of set the scene, fill the scene, and, and progress us through that story, through those filler shots. Uh, and then at some point, you're going to need some sort of closing shot. Now, this doesn't have to be the last picture in the series, even. It could be, but it, but it gives us the impression that, that we are coming to some sort of natural end here, that we're bringing this thing in for a landing. Uh, and then maybe you even have a couple pictures after that, but really this closing shot kind of sets the scene for... Uh, you know, we're bringing, it may be the last, maybe the last shot there, but uh, but it may not be. So, but we need some sort of closing shot to kind of help us naturally come to the conclusion that we're that we're bringing this thing in uh, for a landing here. Okay? So you have all these different kinds of shots. So now that we've talked about them, let me try and show you just in a very small way. And this is a very limited uh, thing just to, to put together so that we could use it here. But so you know, we have a cover shot. Uh, Trump cheat. Trump treats champs to fast food feast, and you see President Donald at the time, President Donald Trump, um, with these uh, all these fast food items, and uh, and so we see that there's a story behind this that, that he's gathered all this food, and we don't know what it is, but you know, so the next that's our that was our opening shot, right? 
or cover shot, and then we come in for an establishing shot to tell what's going on here, what's the story. Well, President Trump greeted the 2018 national champion Clemson Tiger football team at the White House with a smorgasbord of fast food items on January 15th. All right, now, 2019. So the, the backstory behind this, without, I mean, people would know this at the time, but there was a government shutdown at the time, so there were no cooks, there were no servers, there were no anything in the White House. All, all the government employees had been furloughed and sent home and laid off for the time because there was a government shutdown. So President Trump apparently laid out a bunch of his money and, and to, to host the national champion team, which is a tradition in all the sports. Uh, he, he bought a bunch of fast food and had it brought in from all these different places. So anyway... So that's, but that's setting the stage there, right? We see the picture of the president with the, some team and the staff members and different things like that, along with all this fast food there. And we have that one caption to kind of set the scene and let people know what we're, what we're really talking about in a little more detail, provides the date, provides what's going on there. And then the rest of these are just going to be a progression of different shots. So here, here we have another establishing shot showing the players coming through the line and really trying to uh, get some of this food and as their, as their honors national champions. Uh, some people laying out the food and picking up the food and different things. More detailed shot of, you know, some McDonald's food, Big Mac and chicken nuggets and things. Detailed shot of a player grabbing several items here, of course. And then some more just establishing shots. And at the time, this was this is Trevor Lawrence, who was the star of the team. So we got a picture of the star of the team in there as well. Some more, you know, filler shots and details here. French fries in the cups that say President of the United States. So that's, that's kind of significant. That's different. Uh, this sort of turned into a meme. This this player, you know, the, the, the look he was giving and the, the way he was approaching this uh, kind of turned into a meme. So you have that there. But And then you have the players just kind of congregating around the table and eating and enjoying the food and doing the fast food. Uh, and finally, the coach and the president talking about there with the national championship title trophies and things. So sort of bringing things in for a uh, a closing closing shot there. Now, again, this is a very limited you know, just just something I put together real quick, but you, you get the idea for the different kinds of shots, and it progresses through the story and tells the story sort of of what happened that day in that specific event. So, uh, certainly not going to win any Pulitzers for that, but especially since I didn't take any of these pictures, but but uh, certainly not going to win any Pulitzers. But gives you the idea of the different types of shots and the way that these types of things can be put together. So, some other elements to think about when we're thinking about a photojournalism article, things we need to consider is. Uh, that, that really needs to kind of fit into one or more of these categories. First of all, it needs to be either, it could be newsworthy, right? Here we have the, the writing taking place, uh, not writing so much, protests and the conflicts between, uh, writing may be too strong a word, the conflicts at, that took place after the George Floyd, uh, you know, murder, I guess, the death of George Floyd at the hands of the, the Minneapolis police officers uh, who arrested him, and then the conflict that took place afterwards there. I mean, that's newsworthy. This is something that was happening in that moment and, and very much at the front of the news, the forefront of the people's minds and, and concerns about what was going on. So it's newsworthy. We could take a, a photojournalism trip through different uh, things like that, but anything that would be uh, considered newsworthy. Also things that are considered emotional. You know, if we want to raise the emotion and draw the attention of people to, to the subject, I mean, you know, it's hard to ignore these photos, and, and it's possible to get desensitized, but really, it's hard to ignore the photos of, the, of these young children uh, just, just trying to, to get some food, uh, and obviously in need of it. I mean, the, 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 the famine and starvation that's happening in different parts of the world, and, and so these types of, of photos really draw attention to that and bring it to the forefront of our mind, help us. You know, it's one thing to hear about these things. It's another thing to see. And to see special, I mean, it's, it's terrible to see in anybody, but especially in young kids like this. I mean, that really, really pulls at your heartstrings, but in a meaningful way. It's not just a picture for the sake of, of, of drawing emotion. It's, it's drawing emotion for the purpose of uh, helping people be aware of the situation, helping us understand the need for uh, some sort of resolution here and, so, and some action in these areas. So, so it's not only newsworthy, but it's emotional. It really draws our emotion out as well. We have pictures of the intimate, too. We capture things that are intimate. And by the intimate, we really mean emotional plus some sort of interaction. You know, it's obviously an emotional moment. They're, they're full of joy and happiness to see each other. Uh, but there's also that, that interaction that they're having, that the hug that they're getting, the connection that they're getting there. Uh, so uh, that's a really intimate moment that's that's been captured here between these people. So so that could be an important part of a photojournalism article. Or you could focus on the unusual, right? 
uh, this is Albert Einstein, obviously, in a fairly famous picture of, of him sticking out his tongue. And most people think it's just because he was a fun guy or whatever. But the truth is behind the story that it was his birthday that day, his 76th birthday, I think, something like that. And he was on campus. He was trying to get to his friends. He just wanted to celebrate with his friends and get where he was going, but had all these people there taking pictures of him. And he'd been asked to smile and do this and do that. And, and finally, one guy said, uh, you know, Dr. Einstein, can you smile at me? And he turned and he just stuck his tongue out. He was just tired of being photographed, tired of being hounded by these people. Stuck his tongue out. And that was so... I mean, I don't know if it's out of character, but it's it's such a you know a dichotomous image of this you know, obviously brilliant mind, world famous scientist, physicist, all these things, sticking his tongue out like he's a you know third grader or whatever in a picture, and and I'm sure he did have a fun self. But that's still and that's unusual, and that's what makes it great photojournalism. It's capturing the unusual, even if it's not newsworthy, even if it wasn't Albert Einstein, even if it was just somebody on the street. I mean, capturing something unusual like that that, could, that really draws the interest of the audience um, could be an element of that photojournalism article. So again, it, though it needs to really capture one or more of these things, ideally it'll capture more of these things, but it has to fit in at least one of these things to really be uh, considered photojournalism. Otherwise, it's just, just a picture and nobody's going to be interested in it, right? So it's got to fall into one or more of these categories and, and include one or more of these elements. In the end, with photojournalism, we really need to bear in mind this this question, what's the story? Because it's not just a series of pictures. It's not just a bunch of pictures that we put up there. It's, it needs to tell a story. It needs to have some meaning behind it. It needs to push the audience somewhere. It needs to inform us about something or, or you know, make us aware of something, push us to action in some way. So what's the story here? What's the, in the end, what are we hoping the audience will get out of this and what are we hoping you know if we have an agenda what are we trying to push here so what's the story it needs to be in the back of our mind as far as all of these uh, elements of photojournalism what's the story if you have any questions about this or any other uh, element of digital journalism please don't hesitate to email me i'm always happy to receive emails and respond to them as quickly as i can and so i i look forward to in the future, seeing what photos you have to bring to us and what stories you can tell through the medium of photojournalism.